you. All right, we're going to get started. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us here today. I'm incredibly grateful to be surrounded by such strong community leaders, movers, and shakers. And we are all here today for the same reason, for our children and their future. My name is Rena Hicks, and I am the Executive Director of Freedom Virginia, an advocacy organization committed to building a commonwealth where all Virginia families have the freedom to thrive through smart economic policies. As soon as the end of the month, our legislators will make a simple choice. Adopt the Senate budget and give an additional $1 billion to our schools, or adopt the House budget, which contains $1 billion in tax cuts, mostly for the corporations and rich. Unfortunately, Governor Yunkin and House Republicans are choosing to prioritize corporate handouts over fully funding our public schools. As a mother myself, the fact that our representatives would rather give their political donors a tax handout than make sure my son's school has the textbooks, infrastructure, and staff they need is pretty horrific. We are here today to call on legislators to adopt a Senate budget which has a fair approach to taxes, will raise teacher pay, and will provide extra funding for support staff positions, including guidance counselors and other mental health support for our students. First, you will hear from retired educator Jonathan Nottery Adley. Hello, everyone, and thank you for having me here today. I'm Jonathan Nottery Asley, a retired educator with a 28-year public, 28 public school career, and I'm also the candidate for Shenandoah County School Board in District 2. As a teacher, I know the importance of Virginia's budget and how it can directly affect the students in my classroom. My students are smart and intellectually curious, and each one deserves the resources and attention to thrive. Extra investment in K-12 schools isn't just a number. It means more counselors or learning specialists to support my students and help them succeed. Unfortunately, some members in the House of Delegates chose to prioritize their corporate donors over my students. They decided that instead of investing in our children, they would rather give tax breaks to the corporations and the richest Virginians. As a teacher, all I want is for my students to reach their full potential. The Senate budget proposal gives our communities a historic boost in state funding, along with strong investments in health care, higher education, and more. But there can be no greater investment in any community than in schools. Schools are the cornerstone of our neighborhoods. They set our children on the right path towards bright futures. They are the foundation to success, to building traditional wealth in our families, and to solving the world's greatest challenges. These children are our future doctors, scientists, engineers, artists, writers, legislators, and educators. An investment in them is an investment in our future. Next, I would like to introduce the president of the Harrisonburg Education Association, Andy Thompson. Thank you so much. As you said, my name is Andrew Thompson, president of the Harrisonburg Education Association uh, for the last year. I'm also a 28-year educator here in Harrisonburg at Thomas Harrison Middle School, and I also went to Keith elementary Thomas Harrison Middle School and Harrisonburg High School. <laughs> I have two children, one who's a graduate of Harrisonburg High School and one who's currently enrolled at Thomas Harrison Middle School. To say that I have an investment in this community is, uh, is to put it lightly. Uh, my whole life is here. My family is here. My community is right here. And as a teacher, the reason I decided to get active in my local association, as you all know, the winds of change are blowing post-pandemic. Education's changing, culture's changing, society's changing. And as teachers, I felt like we should be get ahead of this change, not wait for the next wave to hit us. In ever-increasing demands on teachers these days, it's hard to imagine a politician in Richmond or, or, or D.C. or where, wherever speaking with teachers and, and folks like you all are here to support your community. Uh, reducing funds for communities is 
hurtful at the very least. So I'm glad to see you guys here supporting Harrisonburg and reaching out to your legislatures. It's going to be critically important that we, the people, set the agenda for the legislators. So I encourage everyone to speak. That billion dollars needs to come to your community, to our people. Harrisonburg faces so many challenges above and beyond just education. We have language learners. We have refugees. We need to integrate into our culture, into our community. We can't do this without the necessary resources. Your teachers and your schools, as John said, are foundations of your community. We cannot let them fade away because politicians decide that others need the money more than your children. I want to thank you for asking Freedom Virginia for asking me to speak. Thank DEA for having faith in me to come up here and root for our community, and I think we should all be on board. Thank you, and I want to introduce the mayor of Harrisonburg, Tina Reed. Thank you. My friend over there, we have this battle. He gets to tell where he went to school, and I'm going to tell you where I went to school. Uh, we do this a lot, don't we? we, we just <laughs> so I went to time. Waterman Elementary School here at Harrisonburg as well as Thomas Harrison. We went to Thomas Harrison because at that time it was the only only middle school here. Now we have two and I'm a graduate of Harrisonburg High School. Um, and I am so invested uh, in our children and our students and our families. Um, before I became mayor, um, and actually during the time that I became mayor, um, I was the vice president of Corner Road Collaborative, which is a after school program that runs in the city schools. Um, and so I am invested um, as a uh, elected official um, in our education um, here in Harrisburg and, and, and everywhere. Uh, so thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. Um, the past month I spent time with our high school seniors uh, celebrating their graduation. Uh, it was such an honor to see these high school seniors transition in, into their young adulthood. Um, here in Harrisonburg, we are so lucky. We are so lucky to have incredible students uh, who are smart, um, who are curious, who are incredible uh, teachers who help them thrive. Um, strong public schools are building blocks to strong, thriving communities. Losing out on these resources would set us back at a time when Virginia is already given, and listen to this, Virginia is already given an F grade from the Education Law Center when it comes to school funding efforts. The additional one billion for our public schools in Virginia would put us in the right direction and help our students succeed. As we shared earlier, there are two vastly different budgets being proposed by the House of Delegates and the Senate. Republicans in the House of Delegates have unfortunately chosen to pass a budget that caters to the lobbying interests of large corporations. Thankfully, my Democratic friends in Virginia Senate are proposing a budget that makes a, makes a billion dollar investment in our public schools. The Senate budget would mean 4.3 million for Harrisonburg City Public Schools, or 689 more dollars more, $689 more per student. The increased funding under the Senate plan would add 51 staffers to Harrisonburg City Schools, including school staff, counselors, social workers, and nurses. Why would we not do that? Why would we not do that for our students, for our families? The House Republican budget isn't just a one-time giveaway to corporations and the wealthiest among us. In the coming years, its cost will balloon, taking billions of dollars away from K-12 schools. Youngkin and his Republican allies are choosing special interests over our students. So I strongly support the Senate budget because funding our schools should be a greater priority than tax giveaways for corporations and the wealthiest among us. In these final weeks of budget negotiations, I'm calling on our representatives in both chambers to listen to what hard 
working Virginia's, Virginian really wants. And invest in our schools. That's what we need. That's what we need to hear in Harrisonville. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Reed. Um, that concludes the remarks, but if folks are up to it, we can take a few questions. Anyone have any?